Okay, so we've got our slats off of the form now. We've got all our cross members. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to give it a light sanding, knock off any of the edges, and then what we'll do is we'll get ready to stain the cross members and maybe two of the slats just to give it some color accentuation. Okay, I've laid a drop cloth out. Let's go ahead and start to stain our wood. Okay, the cross members are stained. Now we're going to go ahead and stain two of our staves. Okay, so we're done staining our pieces. I've set them on here just to give you an idea of what the toboggan will look like when it's finished. We'll let these dry for tonight, and then when we come back tomorrow, we'll start to assemble this toboggan. Okay, so we got a little bit of snow last night, so I moved my operation inside the garage. In our next step, we're gonna put our toboggan together. And what I've done here is I've made a form out of a one by 12, and just stapled in some cross pieces here so that each of our cross members sits exactly 15 and a half inches on center from each other. Okay, so let's go ahead and start to put our toboggan together. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to install our headboard. So you just take it and slide it up over the pieces, pick the color combination or the color sequence that you want, and then we'll start to put this on. And what I use is a number eight by three quarter wood screw and then a number eight countersink. And I put two screws in each board. Make sure that when you countersink it, this stays just flush with the wood. You don't want it to go through because this is the same thickness as all these boards. I like to hand screw these screws in on this top board so that I don't crack anything. Okay, so we're just getting our last screw in. There it is. And then the next step is to put our bumper board on. And what I like to do on my design, on my form that I have, I measure over 12 and a half inches and that gives me exactly center of the curve to put my bumper board on and I'll put it on the outside of the toboggan. That way if you're going down the hill and you hit anything, this this will help protect your toboggan, your bumper board. Okay, so you'll notice that I've put a bunch of uh, cross members on here with clamps. And what I'm doing is I'm just holding all these boards together and keeping them as fair as I can across the toboggan to screw in this bumper board that's going to go on the outside of the toboggan. And then as soon as I get all the screws in this, I'll take all these clamps off and then we'll move on, to, we'll start doing our cross members down the rest of the length of the toboggan. Make sure you put two screws in each board, again both of them number eight by three quarter inch wood screws. Okay, so we have our bumper board installed now. Let's go ahead and take our clamps off.
and we got a pretty fair bend out of our toboggan. So now what we do is we take the toboggan and turn it over, we'll put it on our form, and we'll just start putting in our cross members. Okay, so we've got our form. We'll just go ahead and load it up with our cross members. Upside down, of course. Then we'll take our toboggan. Okay, so I've got my toboggan laid upside down, and what I've done is I've clamped each of the outside boards to the cross members so that they're flush on the outsides. And then what I like to do is use a putty knife, and you can, you can fudge each board to get it to move into line exactly the way you want it. Move it into space, keep even spacing between your boards. And when you drill your pilot holes, remember, I'm going to use this board as an example right here. Your cross members are underneath here, and we cut that groove to receive our rope. So when you put in this outside screw on each side, make sure that you hit right in the center there, about uh, five-eighths to three-quarters of an inch in, so that you don't put a screw through this groove. You don't want to hit that. We'll go ahead and get started. I've marked, I've used my square and just marked where I want each screw. And the best thing to do is put one screw in each of the outside boards to hold them in their place, and then you can fudge each of the, each of the other boards uh, so that you get your even spacing. And make sure that you just go flush with the board. And all this is going to get covered with wax later on when, you, when we finish the board. We're going to put smelt ski wax into it. So that has to be exactly flush or just barely below the surface. Perfect. All right, check for flush. good it's just just barely underneath okay so at this point start adjusting your boards to give yourself equal distance between them and continue that process all the way down your toboggan
screw in, and then let's pop it off the form and see how we did. Okay, so the next step in the process is we want to drill holes to receive the rope that we're going to string the toboggan with. And what I've done <clears throat> is I've come in one inch from the edge, and then if you'll remember, our cutouts on our crossbars for the rope down here is one inch in. So I've come one inch in here also. And I've marked both these, and we'll drill them with a 3 8 inch uh, drill bit. Sissel rope. It's, uh, it's kind of rough, uh, looks rustic, and in the winter time with your mittens on, you can get a good grip on that. It's going to take uh, about 30 feet of this rope for this toboggan. This is a 100 foot rope. You'll get uh, three toboggans out of this. So I'll go ahead and I'll measure out 30, maybe 33 feet. We can always trim it off, and then we'll get ready to string it. Okay, when you're stringing your toboggan, what you want to do is you want to start this cross member right here. And we're going to go down one side. When you get to the end, you just want to tie an overhand knot in that. Good overhand knot. And that will hold this from pulling back through. Go ahead and give it a pull. Make it taut. Then, at this board right here, you want to tie another overhand knot. This will keep this tight so that whenever anybody is riding down the hill and they hold on to this, against each end cross member so that it can't, it can't pull out. So an overhand knot here also. And then what you want to do is you want to pull that tight and snug it up to your cross member. Just tension on, on your uh, on the round part of your toboggan right here. In case one of your sides is off just a little bit, you can adjust it up or down by the tension on your knot. I happen to like this about right here, so we'll just put that overhand knot in there. I've designed this to where this rope comes down to about this fourth cross member. because we're going to adjust the height of, of this side of the toboggan. 
this overhand knot in, we're going to pull this rope real taut. And by pulling this rope real taut against that knot on the first cross member, it's going to put a slight arc in, the, in your toboggan. So when you go down the hill, it's, it's going to lift the front end of this toboggan up just the slightest so you can get a perfect glide down the hill. So when you put this overhand knot in, put a little tension on it. Tighten it up to your cross member. And there you go. And then you can trim the tail off to your desire. Okay, and there you have a toboggan. That's what we built. Next step is we're going to put a finish on it. Okay, so let's go ahead and start finishing our toboggan right now. I like to use clear gloss and I like to use a spar varnish. And the reason I use spar varnishes is because they have UV inhibitors in them. So in case your toboggan gets left out in the weather or something like that, it's just a little bit more protection against the sun. And I also like it because it gives it a nice rich glow. On your first coat, make sure to just really slather on the spar varnish. Be because of the, uh, the steaming or the boiling to get the curb, it really dries out the wood, so it's going to soak up a lot of it. That's coming out real pretty. It might take you three or four coats of varnish just really get it on there good and, and let it soak in, let it protect that wood. And then the last step is we're going to wax it after this is dry and it'll be ready for the hill. down and just start touching the wax to it and dripping the wax all over the bottom of the toboggan and then just take it and heat it and melt it into the bottom of your toboggan. And once you get the bottom covered, you're done. You can take it out now and enjoy it on the slopes. And one last word, be careful and have a bailout plan because this will be the fastest sled on the hill.